Hello. For today's book talk, we will be reading Creek Finding, A True Story by Jacqueline Briggs Martin. The Creek Finding Machine An excavator is a machine that chomps dirt. Excavators dig holes for basements, trenches for water pipes, paths for roads. Sometimes, excavators help find lost creeks. How do they do that? How does a creek get lost? Especially a creek that started a long time ago, with a spring that burbled from the ground and tumbled itself across a prairie valley. The creek wasn't just water. Insects whirred in and out of the creek. Brook trout grew fat in the creek, lunching on insects. Frogs tripped by the creek, ready for their buggy share. Birds watched at the stream side, hungry for bugs, fish, or frogs. Well, the creek did not lose itself. A farmer used a bulldozer to stuff the creek with dirt so he would have more space to grow corn. No water, no water bugs, no frogs, no birds, and no brook trout. The lost creek was quiet under the sun. Trout in a cornfield. Years later, a man named Mike bought that field and the hillside. Mike wanted to grow a prairie in the old cornfield to partner with the sun and soil, grow tall grasses and flowers. One day, as Mike was out working, a neighbor came by and said that long ago, he had caught a brook trout in that very spot. A brook trout in a cornfield? No way! Partnering with the creek. Mike knew there must have been a creek on that prairie. He wanted to find the creek, make a place for brook trout, birds, bugs, and frogs. He said he would call it Brook Creek. Others laughed, said Mike's plan was foolishness. Lost is lost. But someone gave him an old photograph, and he marked the creek's path. Then he called his friends who owned big machines. Scraping and digging. For five days, a bulldozer scraped, an excavator bit into the ground, carved holes, dug curves and runs, tamped rocks for the creek bottom. The excavator had found the old stream. Would water fill the path? Mike said the water remembered. It seeped in from the sides, raced down the riffles and runs, burbled into holes, filled the creek. But a creek isn't just water. It's plants, rocks, bugs, fish, and birds. Mike and his friends tucked cord grass and other green shoots into the creek banks. Three summers, grasses grew. When the creek bed needed more rocks, Mike had a problem. Heavy trucks crossing to the creek would press deep ruts into the ground, kill new prairie plants. How could he get more rocks to the creek? Mike waited until winter, when the ground was frozen hard, cement trucks lumbered across the prairie, emptied their rocks into the creek, and left no ruts. Why not use dump trucks to haul rocks? Mike didn't want to just dump the rocks into the creek. Cement trucks have chutes. He could put the rocks exactly where he needed them. Rocks settled in, plants grew, insects flew in, whirred and buzzed, and laid eggs in the water and on the grasses. After two more years, small fish called sculpin swam into the creek. And that was good news. Sculpin survive only in clean, clear water, the same kind of water that brook trout need. Where did the sculpin come from? Sculpin survived in the small space at the heads of the spring. They swam into the brook creek from the spring. Time for trout. A pickup truck carried the tub that held the trout. Mike and his friends laughed in the morning air, lugged and dumped buckets of finger-sized fish. Perhaps Brook Creek laughed too, tickled by trout. Water was right. Food was right. Trout snapped up the bugs and grew for two summers. In the second fall, the rocks proved perfect places for the fish to lay eggs. Brook trout changed color during egg-laying season, becoming bright red and orange. One, the female trout uses tail fins to scoop out a bowl, a red in the gravelly creek bottom. Two, she releases 15 to 60 pea-sized eggs. Three, the male trout swims past and fertilizes the eggs. Four, the female uses her fin to cover the eggs with gravel and swims to make another red. 
Winter came. Would the eggs survive? Snowstorm, ice storm, cold wind? Fish squiggles. Then, one late winter morning, fish squiggles, no longer than a thumbnail. Squiggles grew into a fat trout, who laid eggs in turn to hatch more generations of trout at home in Brook Creek. Maybe a chuckle, maybe a thanks. If you went to the creek with Mike, you'd see the water. But a creek isn't just water. You'd see brook trout and sculpin. You'd hear the outdoor orchestra. Herons, snipe, bluebirds, yellow throat wa warblers, frogs returned home, and insects. Thousands and thousands and thousands of insects. How did the frogs find the creek? Frogs explore during rains, and perhaps they found Brook Creek on one of their wet wanderings. You hear the water ripple and burble, maybe a chuckle, maybe a thanks, to Mike and the big machines that found the creek. The end.